Right, so hello and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I thought I would talk about my IB results. Um, not my results themselves, but how I got a certain result in my subject. So it was IB results day two weeks ago, I think, two or three weeks ago, I'm not particularly sure. Um, that was a bit of a mess. Uh, I did cry for 45 minutes. It wasn't about this result, it was about another result, which I might film a video on but I might not because I'm really embarrassed about it. It's not even bad, but I'm a massive perfectionist, so it's awful to me. So I'm sure you can tell by the title of this video, this is gonna be about IB biology, and I thought I would share how I got a seven. A seven is an A star in the IB, so it's pretty good, I'd say. Obviously, because of COVID, I didn't actually sit the exams, but I would say that's a fair reflection of what I would have got in the exam. I was only one mark into the seven, so I would say that's a very fair reflection of how I would have done. Can't say the same for psychology, though. But yeah, I was consistently working at a very high six. I was getting a seven in paper two all the time, but my paper one and paper three were just a little bit, a little bit weak, particularly paper three, but I will get onto that. So if you're watching this, I assume you know what IB biology is. It's basically A-level biology, but not. Like it's the same kind of level of content, but you do very different things. So you do, you can do standard level or higher level. Higher level is, base, is the equivalent size wise of an A-level. Standard level is the equivalent of half an A-level. So I did higher level. So if you did standard level, you did six main topics and then you did one optional topic. If you did higher level, then you did 11 main topics and then one optional mo module as well. So because I was in higher level, I did 12 topics and then also the dreaded optional module, which my school chose the worst one of. So basically, topic one, cell biology, pretty simple, cell. Topic two, molecular biology, it's basically carbs, lipids, proteins, fats, that kind of thing. It's not really that molecular, I wouldn't say. I thought it was gonna be really chemistry based. It's really not. Topic three is genetics, planet squares, genetic mutations, that kind of thing. Topic four is ecology, so climate change, conservation, food webs. Topic five is evolution, so that is like evidence of evolution, um, cladograms, cladistics, that kind of stuff. And then topic six is human physiology, so your typical bones, muscles, organs, that kind of thing. So those are the modules that you do if you're in standard level, but because I was in higher level, I did all of those, and then I also did topic seven, which is transcription, translation, and DNA replication. It does what it says on the tin, it is just that. Topic eight, which was metabolism, so you do metabolism, and then you do photosynthesis and respiration hated them both. I hate the cycles, I don't like them. Then topic nine is plant biology, so it's xylem transport, phloem transport, that kind of thing, plant reproduction, and then topic 10 is genetics again, but more in depth, and then topic 11 is animal physiology, which is basically human physiology, and then you do one optional module, so there are four options, you've either got human physiology, biotechnology, ecology, or neurobiology. Obviously, Neurobiology is the interesting one. You already study ecology and human physiology, so those are just like if you want a little bit of detail. My school did not go for the interesting one. Um, they went for biotechnology, which is so boring. Absolute bane of my existence. I hated biotechnology. My teacher also couldn't teach it. Um, I'm looking at you, you did a bad job. So biotechnology is literally just like bioremediation, like it's just biology, it's, it's bacteria heavy. Um, you also do some horrible stuff at the end of it, you do enzyme linked amino absorbent arrays. Yeah, you do some pretty horrible stuff and I'm glad I did not have to sit the paper three because my paper three was okay. I've only ever sat one paper three. Um, I got a very high five, which is not good for me. Here's the thing, right? My individual in each paper, paper one and paper three, not good. Like you'd look at that and you think, how the hell did she get that and then get a seven? But my paper two, absolute saving grace. I'm so good at paper two. This might not sound like much to A-level students, but I was consistently getting about 80%, which is hard to get in an IB, I can't lie. Very difficult. And then you average all of that together. I think it was about 70% for a seven. I'm not sure. Um, that is the basics of IB biology. I don't know if I'm gonna even keep that in because I don't know if anyone's interested, but if you are, you're welcome. So now I'm gonna move on to my revision. This is my revision and also just my class notes. This is my class notes folder. I would make notes, obviously in every lesson. Pay attention, it's not that hard. Pay attention to the lesson, make the notes that your teacher asks, do the homework that your teacher asks. Some of the people in my class, and I'm not gonna name them, but pretty much all of you were on your phones. You're at school to learn. 
um, you chose to study that subject, study it. You know? No. This is my main notes folder. I would make notes in the lesson, come back and just slide them in. I've got 11 file dividers. I didn't particularly look at these. I'm sure everyone else that is kind of revisiony based would say, look at your notes. I didn't look at them. Um, yeah, I really, I didn't particularly ever come back to my notes, ever. Although, right, here's something I did. At the beginning of each subject heading, so this is, this is molecular biology. I printed out the specification. I found that helpful. You can find it online. My teacher did not provide this for me. I found that on my own. But I would recommend doing this because it basically gives you a brief statement list of what you need to know. Here's another thing. Whilst you're making notes in lessons, copy every diagram. Copy the diagrams that your teacher puts on the board because chances are you're going to have to memorise it. Um, you might think at the beginning, oh, why would I need to know the structure of urea? You could get asked the structure of urea. So, yeah, learn it. Make detailed notes. Oh, here is my absolute tip. Get BioNinja. BioNinja saves the IB Biology. If your teacher hasn't told you what BioNinja is, your teacher's doing a bad job. Um, and that's just how it is. Get the BioNinja app. It's free. I think you can get it on pretty much any phone. I had it on an iPhone. My friend had it on an Android. Get BioNinja. It's basically, the app itself is a condensed version of the website. I will link the website down below because you do need it. I'll also link anything else I can find that I used. So yeah, you will need BioNinja. She is, the teachers will copy and paste off BioNinja. That's just how it is. The BioNinja app also has little quizzes that you can do, which I didn't like because they made me feel really bad because I could not get the answers right. But, you know, each to their own. It's, it's a very good app. Get Even if you don't open it all the time, Get it, use it in lessons. If you're allowed to phone out in a lesson, get it out and just have BioNinja on there. And do not close the app and go on social media because no one cares. You're there to study, you're not there to Instagram. That is pretty much it for my notes. I'm gonna put my folder away because she's heavy. So. That was kind of what I did whilst I was at school. So whilst in lessons and still being taught the work rather than being taught revision, that is what I did. Bio Ninja, copy diagrams, copy the notes, get your get your specification and pay attention. It really isn't that hard. Your teacher does genuinely want you to pass. Some of them might not seem like it, but it looks good on them if you pass and do well. It's gonna be good for you to get a good grade, but it's also gonna be good for them. So if your teacher's nice to you, don't let them down. They're counting on they're counting on the one smart kid in their class. Um, and I don't want to say that was me. That was me. I'm sorry, sorry to the other couple of smart kids in biology. Um, I hope you did well. I don't know what your grades were, but thanks. <laughs> Something else I did whilst I was kind of working was I started making glossaries. I did not end up using these at all, but whilst I was doing it, it was kind of helpful. I made these on Quizlet and then I just printed them out from Quizlet. So it basically just says a word, then a definition. You need to know a lot of definitions. Your marks come from definitions. If you don't know the basic definitions, you're absolutely stuffed. Um, if you don't know the answer to a question, define all the words you're going to get marks, trust me. I did not know the answer to a lot of questions. I got stumped on a stem cell question in our mock. Just to find some stem cells, gave some examples, and I was like, that's all I can do. I got three marks out of four. Good enough for me. So, yeah, you can make glossary. You can find mine on Quizlet. I think you can find other people's. I did just steal from BioNinja and other people's, so it's not my own work. Most of it's not my own work. I'm not going to make my own notes. Um, that's what my folder's for. I'm not going to do it on here as well. So that's kind of what I did whilst we were in class and that is my basic summary. Now I'm just going to quickly explain the exams if anyone doesn't know. So you do three papers. Paper one is multiple choice. I think it's out of 40 if you're in higher level. Don't be, you think it's easy, it's not. Um, I thought, oh, multiple choice, you can't go wrong. My highest ever mark out of 40 was 28. And I'm sure you're thinking, yeah, that's okay, but that's still only like a five. I think that just pushes you into a six, which is an A, but also like, it is hard. The thing with the IB is they give you multiple choice questions and then two answers are very obviously wrong and two answers are basically identical except from one word. And you will spend a lot of time differentiating between those two. You think a 40 mark paper, 40 minutes, 
When it's multiple choice, you could be done in 10. Use the rest of your time, all of it. You do go back, look at every single question, co cover the answer that you've chosen, look back and read it and think, oh, which one? Write down your reasoning, shove little notes. Your notes aren't gonna get marked, but they might help you kind of remember something that you need to know. I would draw little pilot squares and diagrams. My paper one was an absolute mess, but it still, like, it got me marks. Um, not many, but it did get me some. So then, paper two. Paper two is the big boy. Paper two, oh, I forgot to mention, paper one is on every core module that you've done. So for standard level one to six, and for high level one to 11. Paper two is the same, but not multiple choice. Yeah, you can get anywhere from one to nine markers, I think. You could get more than nine, but the biggest mark question I've ever been asked is a nine marker. So if you're in standard level, it will have standard level content. If you're in high level, it will have higher level content in it. At the beginning, it's kind of like a data question. It will give you a graph. Um, it will ask you, oh, you know, explain this, give the median, give this. Take your calculator. You need a calculator for biology. All of the papers. Magnification, you need a calculator. You're allowed a calculator, so take one. This first bit is a little bit of data. Second bit of the data question will be using the biology that you have learned to explain the results or something similar to that. Then the middle section of the paper is just lots and lots of questions. Just loads. They just shove questions at you. So yeah, you answer loads of little questions. That bit's kind of all right. Then you get to the last section. You get three questions. If you're in standard level, you answer one of them, and I think you only get two. If you're in high level, you get three and you answer two. One of them is three marks. One of them is four. One of them is kind of three to four marks. One of them is kind of five to six. And then the other one is seven to nine marks. So they'll be on a similar topic. They won't necessarily be the exact same thing, but they will be similar or at least related. So if you see a section on like a question that relates to cell biology and you think, no, I don't know cell biology, don't answer that selection. Those three questions are where I did best. In my January mock, I got full marks on all of those questions. Thank you very much. Then you've got paper three. Paper three is, I think one hour, I think it's 45 marks. The first section is kind of your required practical section. We didn't do, like, I don't remember the practicals and I still did okay. It just kind of asks you generic questions like, oh, give an example of what you would have to control in this study. Things like that. Then you move on to the second section. You can still pick your option. So you may have been taught biotechnology, but you may think, Jesus Christ, my teacher was rubbish. Definitely not coming from personal experience. Um, and then you can just answer another question. You are given all of the questions. So if you get taught biotechnology and you don't know the answers to any of them, have a look through the other questions. You can't pick, you can't answer all of the sections. You have to contain your answers to one section. So if you look through biotechnology and think, oh, I could only get two marks, but you look through human, human physiology and you think, oh, I could probably get 10 marks, put all of your work into human physiology and cross out your other answers. Then you do an IA. Um, that's an internal assessment. It's basically your own study. You do your own study, your own experiment. You, you have a question, you control your variables, you write up a report. I don't know how many marks I got. It's not on the IB website and my teacher never told me, but my first draft got 16 marks or 17. It's either out of 20 or 24. I don't know, I don't remember. I don't have my IA, I can't find it. I don't know how many marks I got, but it was enough to push my combined average to a seven. Yeah, so that's the papers and that's everything. Now I'm gonna move on to how I revised. Another thing, keep all of your papers. Um, there's my flower that I drew, she's not very good. Keep them all, go through them. There's only so many questions the IB can ask you. I have answered the same question about DNA replication so many times. In the first one, I got six marked. Every question after that, I got nine out of nine because I knew what the answer was. I knew where to get all my marks. I could write significantly less and still get nine marks. Right, so now I'm gonna move on to revision. I'm not gonna lie, I did not do as much revision as I would have liked, but I would say I consistently kind of revised throughout year 12 and 13. So I didn't have to kind of bulk it together at the end, like I knew the content after we did the topic. I didn't forget it and then have to come back to it. So I consistently studied. I always opened Bioninja on the bus, just had a little read through. So I had biology on Thursdays, Thursday morning and Thursday on the bus back. Open Bioninja, just have a quick look, look at what you've already learned and then look at what the next topic is. Right, so then for revision, I had a separate folder. This is all of my IB biology revision. It's all together, keep it together. Um, put it in a folder, it doesn't really matter which folder you've got. So. This has got a lot of content for revision. This is not the most condensed version of things that you could do, but here is what I did. So, I went on the Bio Ninja website. My saving grace, you need Bio Ninja. I'm not gonna lie, this is why I got my seven, is Bio Ninja. So, I went on the Bio Ninja website, 
after we'd done each topic, so after we'd done 1.1, which is introduction to sales, I went on the Bio Ninja website and I copy and pasted all of the important information into a document and I printed it out straight away. So this is all of the content I needed to know. Every single thing. So that is what it looks like. Um, I can share this online if I can work out how to, but I'm not sure how to do that. So I basically did that for every single topic and I just looked through them. Simple as that. I don't have, right, I'm sure a lot of people will say, oh, I have a really special technique for revising. I don't. I just looked through my notes when I was bored. I, I read through my notes when I had a free period. If you've got a free period, use it for schoolwork. Some, right, sometimes you do need your free period to just have a nap, go for a walk, get a snack, but you're in school, you're already there. If you've got a lesson after your free period, you, you probably can't go home. I couldn't get home, definitely not, it was way too far away. I just sat there and revised. Or just watched a biology video. I use Crash Course Biology is kind of okay. Um, it doesn't have much content that's related to IB Biology, but some of the stuff it has is okay, like it's worth watching. So even just like watching things like that. Um, we also watched the Amoeba Sisters, they were all right. Then we have this, which is great. I got this from another YouTube video. Someone else made a YouTube video on how they got a seven or how to do well in IB Biology, and I I took their document. They gave it, they put it online. I'm like, I was allowed to take it. I didn't just steal it, but it's great. If I can find the video, I will link it. Um, I don't know what it was called, but it basically has every question I could be asked. It has things, so basically, it says outline, and then it says all of the things that I could be forced to outline. Then compare and contrast, annotations of diagrams. So this is mostly for the short questions, but for the long questions, it's basically the same, but it will say explain. Um, it really is. Me. So when we had mocks and stuff, I would just take this folder with me on the bus, read through it, flick through it. I would pick the topic that I didn't particularly understand, which was normally metabolism because photosynthesis and respiration just too difficult for me. I would just take this and just read it on the bus. But if you travel on the bus to school, just use your time to study. Like you don't have to use all of it. I would watch, I don't know, half an hour of BBC iPlayer and then a little bit of revision. On the way back, I wouldn't revise normally because it just, it wasn't gonna happen. It was five o'clock. It wasn't gonna stay in my brain at all. Um, so I made posters. I didn't particularly use these. I know that some people put posters up on their wall and they find them really useful. I didn't, didn't particularly do much for me, but it was kind of a useful thing to make. So I would just put the very, very key details. This is a condensed version of this. Um, yeah. So some of them have a lot of information on. This bioinformatics one, she's got a lot going on because I didn't understand any of it. But also, here's something I did, colour coding. These two colours were my bioinformatics colours. In this document here, I used the same colours because, you know, you might link it. I don't know if there's any, I think there is science behind it, but I don't know if that did anything for me, but we'll pretend it did. So that is all I kind of did for revision. I did use some websites. I'm not particularly sure what they are, but I will find them whilst I'm editing this or when I'm doing the description box. I'll put them in at the bottom so you can find them because they are helpful. Obviously, Bio Ninja will be in there. This this video should just be called How Bio Ninja Gave Me a Free Seven because Bio Ninja will do you well if you actually use Bio Ninja. You can do really well with it. I'm sure loads of people um, like in my year that were like, oh, I used Bio Ninja and I didn't do well. That's not really on Bio Ninja though, is it? Because you were on your phone all biology lessons, weren't you? Right, that is kind of it on revision and everything like that. I will just try and summarize. I don't remember what I've said, but I will try. Number one, Bio Ninja. Um, I could stop there and you, you will do okay. Use Bio Ninja, get the app, do lots of reading on it. If you're bored, watch a biology video. Go on Bio Ninja, it's great. Right, so number two, kind of in-class stuff. Pay attention. Paying attention in class is not hard. It really isn't. You might have a short attention span, but find something to fidget with. I would fidget with things. Um, teachers didn't care as long as I was doing the work. Copy what your teacher tells you to copy. Your teacher knows the spec better than you. They're a teacher. So don't think, oh, I won't need this. If your teacher tells you you're gonna need it, you're gonna need it. Um, pictures, any picture that you come across, you will probably need to copy down. Then, right, for your IA, try. You might be thinking, oh yeah, a day off lessons, this is really fun. Use it for your actual thing. You're, you're, you have a day off lessons for the IA, 
use the day for the IA. Don't think, oh, I want to go home at one o'clock, so I'm going to say I'm finished. You're not finished. Trust me, you're not finished at all. Spend your time on it. It's really, it doesn't take that long. I wrote all of my IA within our two days because I chose something. I, I thought about this. I chose something that I could just set up and leave. So I could, I could set my thing up and then spend the rest of the day writing up my notes. You can have 12 pages, use them all. Don't waffle, but if you think, oh, I could add a little bit here, add it. Also for the personal interest, make it up. Mine's completely made up. I said I was a photographer. I'm not a photographer, but I, it got me marks. But yeah, for the IA, get as many marks as possible because that is something that you can get a draft marked and then your teacher can tell you, oh, you did a bad thing here. You can get rid of it. You don't get that in the exam. That is a very good 20, 25% that you can very easily achieve. You want probably a higher mark in your IA than you're expected to get in your papers because that will just pull you up. It could just pull you up one grade. And also, your teachers are paid to help you. Use them. If you don't understand something, even if it's just like one point, email your teacher and say, you know what? I didn't understand this. Can you send me the document that you had? Can you answer my question? Or can I come and see you at lunchtime? I pestered my teachers. Um, I sat with them many lunch times and I was like, I don't understand, teach me. If you don't understand something, your teacher does. They're the one with the degree. Um, use them, ask them for help. It's awkward, it's uncomfortable, it shouldn't be. They're there to help you. I think that's pretty much it. Um, just pay attention, just try. If you put some effort in, you will see something out. You get feedback for a reason. Use your feedback. I think that could be everything I need to say. I'm not sure. If I've got anything else to say, I'll put it in the description box probably. I will put some links there. But yes, that is how I got seven. Mainly bio and injured, but also pay attention and use your teachers and a good IA. Your good IA is gonna save you, I can't lie. But yeah, um, if you enjoyed this video, thank you. If you didn't enjoy it, it, sucks to be you. Again, you've given me watch time, so thank you very much. And so yeah, if you have any questions, ask me, leave them down below. If you have anything mean to say, don't do it. Because I'm very fragile and it will hurt my feelings. So yes, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Um, hope you didn't hate it.